Mikawa Sui, the founder of Reiki, was born on the 15th of August 1865 in the small village of Tanai in Japan. He had two younger brothers and an older sister, and his family were descendants of a famous samurai clan. It is noted on his memorial stone that his family's origins can be traced back to Tsunitani Chiba, a famous Japanese warrior and hero from the 12th century. During his youth, Yusui studied and travelled extensively, but in his 50s Yusui was believed to have come upon hardship in his personal life and became estranged from his wife and two children. The truth of Mikawa Sui's life remains mostly a mystery, as does the origin story of how he came to possess the gift of Reiki, but most people can agree that in 1920, at the age of 55, Mikawa Sui spent some time up on Mount Karama and upon descending had gained knowledge of the Reiki technique and either saw the Reiki symbols in a vision or created them himself to help focus the energy he was working with. There is a story that Isui went up on the mountain in order to commit suicide by allowing the elements and starvation to take him, although some believed he had simply intended to spend some time retreating from mundane life and upon being endowed with healing hands, ran down from the mountain. As the story goes, Yusui stubbed his toe, cupped it with his hands, and noticed that the pain had subsided. He rushed into a restaurant where the waitress complained about toothache, so he offered to place his hands on her cheek, and again the pain vanished. Yusui then developed a system that would enable him to pass on his knowledge of Reiki and open up the channel to others and within the next several years managed to train 2,000 students, 21 of which to master level. During the Great Kanto earthquake which devastated Tokyo in 1923, it was reported that Yasui and his students assembled themselves around the injured and gave Reiki using their hands and even their feet to reach and heal as many people as possible. Yusui died in 1926, just six years after he had founded the system of Reiki. Although most likely not a medical doctor, Dr. Shujiro Hayashi was the youngest of Yusui's students, having completed his training in 1925 at the age of 45. Having learned the system of Reiki, Dr. Hayashi left the Navy and opened his own clinic in Tokyo, where he had 10 beds and two practitioners working on a patient at any one time. He treated the wealthy and well-connected, and his wife continued the clinic after Dr. Hayashi committed seppuku, otherwise known as harakiri, which is the act of suicide by stabbing oneself in the hara, or the sacral chakra area, and ultimately bringing one's life to an end. Dr. Hayashi trained many students and his teachings are still influential in many Reiki schools to this day. Hawaiyo Takata, an American-born Japanese woman healed and trained in Japan by Dr. Shijiro Hayashi, became the first person to bring Reiki to the West. During her time in Japan visiting family, she discovered she was suffering from a tumour she decided against surgery, opting instead to receive Reiki from Dr. Hayashi, and after two months of daily treatments, her tumour was gone. Upon returning to the US after becoming a Reiki master herself, Hawaiyo Takata started treating patients and teaching Reiki levels 1 and 2. At the age of 70, Takata started teaching the master level, charging $10,000 for the course. The price of the course excluded many potential students and at the time of her death in 1980 she had trained 22 masters. As the first person to bring Reiki to the West, those who learn through Takata or her students are branches of what is called the Western lineage and those who trained under the masters of the Gakkai have Eastern lineages. In the 1990s, the Yusui Reiki Learning Society, also known as the Reiki Gakkai, founded by Mikao Usui himself, came to light. This organization had over 40 branches and up to 8,000 members in the 1930s, 
but during the war, the Gakai went into hiding after threats and legislations limiting hands-on healing to medical doctors and massage therapists only came into place, making it dangerous to practice Reiki openly. Members were recruited by invitation only, and the Gakai remains strictly regulated to this day. Master Hiroshi Doi, a member of the Gakai, stated that in the 1990s he was the youngest of the 300 members left, and he was in his 60s at the time. Hiroshi Doi was one of the few masters who received permission from the Gakai leadership to share some of the Gakai's knowledge and teachings to his Western teachers. However, Doi himself did not train to master level with the Gakai. It is important for us to remember that although Mikawasui discovered and systemized Reiki in the 1920s, Reiki has been around since the beginning of time. Its name literally means universal life force energy, and the practitioner is simply honing in and directing this energy for the purpose of healing. Today, despite guidelines by masters and practitioners all over the world asking students to keep Reiki techniques and symbols for those who have trained in Reiki only, the internet has made it easy to find everything one needs in order to learn about Reiki, except for the actual attunement. The traditional Yusui Reiki system has three levels. Level 1, which is known as Shoden. Level 2, which is Okuden and level 3 or master level, which is Shinpiden. Level 1 gives you the ability to start using Reiki on yourself and on friends and family. In Reiki 2, students receive and are able to use the three main Reiki symbols, and this level is also known as the practitioner level, as students may now start a Reiki business if they so wish. In the master level, students are given extensive training, the master symbol, and the knowledge to be able to attune, teach Reiki, and train others also. For each level, a student must receive attunements, which take place in a small ceremony, whereby the Reiki master tunes the student into the correct energy frequency to start using Reiki immediately. Some students may feel a heat or tingling in their hands right away, but many do not feel anything for a long time and this is perfectly normal, especially if the student has not been receiving regular Reiki treatments themselves. After an attunement, the student will usually go through a natural cleansing process and should ensure that they are drinking plenty of water to stay hydrated. Finding a good Reiki master is key, as he or she will be the spiritual guide and role model for you and your practice, so making sure that you find the time to find someone who resonates with you is important. A good Reiki master will provide you with some sort of handbook for each course you take and should offer ongoing support to students regardless of their level. All of my students and practitioners who attend my Reiki shares have my personal contact number and are free to contact me for guidance and support whenever they need to. Reiki masters I train also get an optional quarterly one-to-one -one Skype call with me. A Reiki lineage is like a family tree and is used to trace a practitioner's line of attunements all the way back to Mikao Usui himself. It's important for any student looking for a master to verify the master's lineage so as to be sure that they are receiving authentic Yusui training. Many practitioners choose to train under a number of different masters even when at master level themselves in order to receive extra knowledge and learn new techniques. All Reiki masters will incorporate their own teachings and adapt what was taught to them to fit in with their own style of teaching but all good master teachers will remain loyal in sticking to the authentic symbols, kotodamas, which are simply chants, attunements, and other essential pillars of Yusui Reiki. If you are interested in receiving Reiki training, please visit my website, enchantedreiki.co.uk, for more information. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to Master Mikao Usui and the history of Reiki. Please make sure you are subscribed and check that you've turned on notifications by hitting the bell.